Hey, what's going on guys? Nick Karen here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And today, guys, what I want to bring to you is my top 10 quarterbacks for the 2015 NFL season. Now, I will be bringing you guys other positions as well. We'll at least be doing running back, wide receiver, tight end. I'm not somebody who really cares that much about defense or kicker, so we might get around to that depending on how things go, but it's not really a priority on my current agenda anyway. So if you guys are really interested in seeing one of those two lists or both of them, leave it in the comments section below and let me know, and, and maybe you'll be able to intrigue me enough to actually put out one of the videos. But uh, with that being said, guys, let's get into the top 10 quarterbacks because obviously quarterback, the highest scoring position in fantasy football, it's the one that most people are excited about when they go into their draft. They want to make sure that they get the best quarterback that they can. So let's make sure that we can do that this year by identifying the players who are good values and the guys who are going to put up great fantasy points for you this year. So let's start off at number 10 with Eli Manning of the New York Giants. Now, Eli Manning, I know he's a guy, and he's not somebody that I'm a huge fan of in the real NFL, which I know a lot of people think is really bizarre. I think a lot of people actually believe that his fantasy value is a lot better than, or his real life value is a lot better than his fantasy value, excuse me. And I actually believe the opposite. I think Eli Manning, right now at least, is a better fantasy quarterback than he is a real life quarterback. I don't rank Eli Manning in my top 10 among NFL quarterbacks despite the fact that he's won a couple of Super Bowls. I understand that. But I think there are other guys right now who are actually better passers, who make better decisions and don't throw as many interceptions. So uh, Eli Manning, to me, though, is a top 10 fantasy quarterback, mostly because of the offense that he's in, which uh, is kind of surprising. This team traditionally has been kind of a run-first team under Eli Manning, but over the past couple of seasons, and especially last season, they were definitely a pass-first offense Eli Manning actually finished 8th in 2014 in fantasy points, and a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, but obviously with the addition of Odell Beckham Jr. when he got onto the field, this offense kind of went really right toward the passing game. And that f is going to feature Eli Manning, obviously. He's going to be able to put up big fantasy points. They should pass even more this season now that they have a healthy Victor Cruz back as well. Odell Beckham Jr. will play all 16 games this year, obviously presuming that he is going to be healthy and remain healthy. But they didn't. He, Eli didn't even have Odell Beckham Jr. for the majority of last year, and he didn't have Victor Cruz for the majority of last year. He basically had Ruben Randall and a bunch of jabronis. So uh, let's see what we, he can do with a healthy Victor Cruz, a healthy Odell Beckham, and Ruben Randall being a wide receiver three on the roster. I think really you're looking at Victor Cruz as being kind of the, the interesting component of this offense because if he comes back and even performs at – 80% of what he was before, you're talking about potentially a top five passing game here. And despite the fact that Eli Manning's probably going to throw double digit interceptions this season like he does most years, he's going to finish that up by being able to uh, compensate for it with 30 or more touchdowns this year and probably 40, 4,500 or more yards through the air. So I think he has a really high ceiling here. His floor is also fairly low, which is why I have him at number 10. There could be a, a situation where Eli just goes out there and plays like Eli has before, and he throws 20 interceptions, and he only throws 25 touchdowns. So that is definitely a possibility given this offense. The offensive line isn't great there in New York, so we really are going to have to see what happens. But I like Eli Manning as a potential QB1, and the great thing is that you can actually get him as a QB2 in a lot of leagues, so there's not a lot of risk with him. If he does end up being terrible, you throw him back onto the waiver wire and go grab somebody else not that big of a deal so let's move on to number nine and number nine I've got Ryan Tannehill who I, I think a lot of people don't realize was a top 10 fantasy quarterback last year and really that was in an offense that didn't feature what I think he's best at now a lot of people know Ryan Tannehill having a big arm but a lot of people don't really realize that he was really kind of ineffective at throwing deep to Mike Wallace. So they added a new receiver this year, which is, of course, Devontae Parker, who is now off the pup list as well, which is an interesting component because most people didn't expect him to be ready for the beginning of the season. We're not saying for certain that he is going to be ready for the beginning of the season, but the fact that he's off the, the pup list already, I think, is a great thing for Ryan Tannehill. He also added Jordan Cameron this offseason, which I, I believe is going to be a nice addition for him. If Jordan Cameron can stay healthy, which... I know isn't likely given Jordan Cameron's history, but if he can stay healthy, I do think that that's going to be an improvement for this Miami Dolphins offense. The other thing, 
I really love the connection that, that Ryan Tannehill has right now with Jarvis Landry. I mean, this is a, a combination that is going to be good for the future. These guys are probably going to put up 90 or more receptions, and that's nice. You know, uh, even if even if uh, he doesn't end up putting up a, a 90 reception season and he only is at like 75, that's still going to be good enough for Ryan Tannehill to be a good quarterback. We don't really think about Ryan Tannehill as being a mobile quarterback, but in this Miami Dolphins offense, there's a lot more read option there than there is in a lot of these other offenses that we more think of as being a traditional run first offense. Uh, you know, if you think about Colin Kaepernick, for example, Kaepernick didn't run hardly as much read option as we expected him to last year, whereas Ryan Tannehill actually ran more than we expected. And, and Tannehill still didn't run quite as much as Kaepernick, but he was still very, very effective. He, he put up good amounts of rushing yardage in a lot of different weeks. And if he's going to be able to go out there and rush for 30, 40 yards a week, you're really talking about a quarterback that's adding three to four or more potentially if he runs into the end zone fantasy points to your team each and every week. So I expect the passing numbers to actually increase for Ryan Tannehill. The rushing numbers should remain roughly the same in this offense. I expect the offense to be better as a whole as well. So that's why I'm moving Ryan Tannehill from where he was ranked last year at number 10 at the end of the season, and he is my number 9 fantasy quarterback for the 2015 season. At number eight, I have a quarterback who I personally love, obviously. I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan, if you guys don't know. And that is, of course, Tony Romo. I think this guy gets underdrafted every single year. And, and no, people are going to talk about that he's a choke artist, whatever. It, it doesn't matter for fantasy football, okay? The thing that matters is the fact that Tony Romo puts up great fantasy numbers every single year. You can set your clock to it. Tony Romo is going to put up huge numbers every year. And he's going to do it again this year. There's no question about it. As long as Romo stays healthy and as long as Des Bryant stays healthy, this offense is still going to put up big passing numbers. Now, granted, they took a step back in yardage this past season while DeMarco Murray put up a monster season. But DeMarco Murray is now in Philadelphia, okay? And the Dallas Cowboys are going to have to pass the ball more. I still do expect that they're going to run the ball plenty and they should have, you know, a good quality running game. But the offense still goes through Tony Romo and, and particularly Des Bryant. They still have other options as well. Terrence Williams, Cole Beasley, Jason Witten, all of these guys getting drafted in most fantasy leagues. So you've got four different options in the passing game and five if you consider the running backs uh, that are fantasy relevant. And yet Tony Romo is still going undrafted among starting quarterbacks at least. I mean, he's going as the 13th quarterback, 14th quarterback off the board in a lot of leagues, and that's absolutely crazy. Tony Romo will almost certainly finish in the top 10 at the quarterback position, like I said, as long as he stays healthy this season. And with the offensive line that they have, I don't see any reason to believe that that won't happen. Romo threw for 34 touchdowns and only 9 interceptions this past year with 3,705 yards. I mean, that touchdown to interception ratio is almost 4 to 1. Those are historic type of numbers, honestly. They really, truly are. So when you're talking about consistency at your fantasy foot football quarterback position, it doesn't get a whole lot better than Tony Romo, especially considering the value. This guy is very, very safe, and I do expect that he will finish probably, like I said, in the top 10 at the position, and I like him all the way up at number 8. Moving on now to number 7, we have Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons. This is a guy who typically was not really considered to be a high-end fantasy quarterback early in his career, but now he's really developed into kind of being right around a top five to top seven fantasy quarterback. I have him at number seven. That's where he finished in 2014, and he finished in, at number seven despite the fact that both Julio Jones and Roddy White missed time and were injured. They played through injuries this past year, so it makes sense to me, at least, that he will probably see an uptick in terms of overall fantasy value. This is still an offense that is pass first. The running game is questionable at best. They, they don't really have anybody that stood out as far as running backs go. And the offensive line really is quite mediocre as well. Most importantly though, the, the Atlanta Falcons defense is still pretty bad. So I actually expect that this team is going to be in a lot of shootouts once again. And there's no reason to believe that Matt Ryan won't be able to at least come close to doing what he did this past year, which was a good amount of yardage, 28 touchdowns, 
14 interceptions, a 2-1 to one ratio. The interceptions we'd hope would take a little bit of a regression, and the touchdowns potentially maybe a little bit, a bit of a boost up. And if he can do that along with putting up similar yardage, we're talking about a top five fantasy quarterback. Now, you don't have to take Matt Ryan real high in your fantasy draft, so there could be value, but definitely don't reach on this guy because I don't think that he has the elite number one overall quarterback type of potential, but he is still a very good value, I think, in fantasy drafts going where he currently is. So keep that stuff in mind, guys, and let's move on to number six. My number six fantasy quarterback is Big Ben Roethlisberger of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And obviously this guy had a monster season this past year, tied for the league lead in passing yardage, which is kind of crazy considering if, if you really look back at the history of his career, other than a couple of blips on the radar, Big Ben hasn't been a great fantasy quarterback. He's finished outside of the top 12 quite a few times, which has made him not a startable fantasy quarterback most weeks in, in his career. But this past year, he finished fifth at the position, had a big year obviously with the yardage, plenty of touchdowns, not that many interceptions either. So, I mean, for the most part, Big Ben was a pretty consistent fantasy quarterback this past year. Obviously, it's helpful that he has Antonio Brown catching passes for him, and Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield is a great receiver as well. But I like the additions of Marcus Wheaton and Martavis Bryant over the past couple of years. Both of these guys are developing into good fantasy receivers themselves, and we could potentially see two top 20 wide receivers out of Pittsburgh, possibly even top 15, and even three top 30 receivers, which would be very, very fun to watch with this Pittsburgh offense. So I like the upside of Big Ben, Big ben Roethlisberger, and I don't see any reason that he doesn't finish in the top 10 again this year. I like him all the way up there at number six. Again, that's slightly down from what he did this past year, just because I like some other guys a little bit better, and I like their consistency throughout their career a little bit more. But Ben Roethlisberger is certainly worthy of being a fantasy football starter this year, so I'm very happy to have him if we get him at number six among quarterbacks. Now on to number five, which is Drew Brees. This guy is just the marquee of fantasy numbers. Seriously, this guy puts up crazy numbers almost every single year. He has been a top six fantasy quarterback every year that he's been in New Orleans, going back to all the way since 2006 throughout his career. He's been a top six fantasy quarterback. And I say top six only because he finished sixth at quarterback this past year. Other than that, it was top five. So that's crazy. I mean, Drew Brees putting up huge numbers, obviously, throughout his career. And honestly, there doesn't really seem to be much of a reason that he wouldn't continue to do that. Obviously, you do see the, the loss of Jimmy Graham probably bringing down Brees' touchdown totals just a little bit. I, I think that they're going to be a little bit more likely to run the ball near the goal line rather than throw up the little fade route to Jimmy Graham. But at the same time, this is still going to be a very pass-first offense. Sean Payton's not going to go away from that just because that they don't have Jimmy Graham anymore. Obviously, you look at the fact that they're you know trying to improve their offensive line, and that's nice and everything, but it's still going to be pass, 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 and then maybe a run mixed in here or there. They brought in C.J. Spiller not to run the ball. He's going to catch passes out of the backfield. I love the fact that Brandon Cooks looks to be an improved wide receiver, and they still have other players on the offense that are contrib going to contribute as well. So Drew Brees to me is my number five fantasy quarterback. I don't think necessarily that he has the potential again to be the number one fantasy quarterback or even the number two this year, but I do believe that he's a very, very safe bet. It doesn't get much safer than Drew Brees. Like I said, he's been an elite quarterback the entire time he's been in New Orleans, and just because they're, they don't have Jimmy Graham anymore doesn't mean that that's going to change. He's certainly going to be a top 10 quarterback once again this season. My number four fantasy quarterback is a guy who really broke out as a big-time fantasy player this past season, and that is Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, Wilson obviously has been a dominant NFL quarterback in terms of win-loss ratio. That doesn't really help fantasy owners. This past year, though, his rushing totals were historic, 849 yards, six touchdowns on the ground. This is a guy who is extremely mobile and can also get the job done through the air as well. He did throw for 3,475 yards, 20 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. Decent touchdown to interception ratio. He doesn't throw a lot of picks, which is nice, so you don't lose a lot of, of points off of those interceptions. And also it helps the fact that he doesn't really have a ton of low-end games because of that. So uh, to me, Russell Wilson is a guy who I, I like 
Um, I will say that I believe that he's being overdrafted just a little bit, especially considering that people are really boosting him up now that they have Jimmy Graham on the roster. So it's kind of funny that we went from a guy at number five in Drew Brees who's losing Jimmy Graham to number four now, Russell Wilson, who's gaining Jimmy Graham. And there's really not any reason to not to believe that Russell Wilson's passing numbers won't increase. Uh, I believe that those passing numbers will go up. I, I'm expecting you to see uh, probably mid to upper 20s in touchdowns. You might see the interceptions float up to around 10 or so. Just, you know, natural considering the fact that he's going to have to pass the ball a little bit more, I expect, this year. Maybe not have to pass the ball. They just probably will pass the ball a little bit more this year. They, I'm sure they want to keep Marshawn Lynch healthy. Uh, he's getting older, obviously. So to, you want to keep him healthy for the playoffs, and you don't want to run him into the ground before the, you get to those playoffs. So I think they will pass a little bit more this year. They've basically been historically low numbers in terms of pass attempts for a good team anyway uh, under Russell Wilson. I, I expect them to be a little bit closer to the league average at least in passing attempts this year, which should help Russell Wilson's numbers out quite a bit. Um, obviously the touchdowns will go up because of Jimmy Graham and they, you know, they have a quality wide receiver, not a wide receiver, but a, a receiver that can catch passes in the end zone like Jimmy Graham. So that's obviously nice. The problem I see here is that I, I see a natural regression in these rushing numbers. I don't think it's, a, it's sustainable for the Seattle Seahawks to go out there and, and run that many attempted runs with Russell Wilson. I expect that he's still going to take off and run on some plays, and uh, but I, I do think that they're going to be teaching him, look, you need to run out of bounds. You can't be running down the field taking hits and, and putting our franchise at risk, frankly. They don't really have anything behind Russell Wilson. They've got, what, Tarveris Jackson? If Tarveris Jackson's this team's quarterback going forward, I mean, are they a Super Bowl contender anymore? I don't think so. I mean, they gave this guy a huge contract. Russell Wilson got a monster deal just this past offseason. So it, it makes sense, obviously, that this team's going to want to protect their investment. I, like I said, I believe that the rushing numbers will go down a little bit. Uh, six touchdowns is also very high, so I see a natural regression in that number down to three or four this year, which is still good for a quarterback. And I, I mean, I, I would expect that Russell Wilson's still going to rush for 500, maybe to 600 yards, but that's still, again, a natural regression. So I think that Russell Wilson's overall numbers are going to remain relatively similar but I think they're going to come in different ways. And that could actually be even better for your fantasy team down the road, especially if you're in a keeper format because Russell Wilson's more likely to stay healthy. So again, he's my number four fantasy quarterback. I, again, don't expect the monster rushing numbers, but better passing numbers to make up for it. My number three fantasy quarterback this year, guys, is Peyton Manning. Yeah, I know it's bizarre almost to think of Peyton Manning as not being a number one, number two fantasy quarterback, but it's, it's even more bizarre to me that he's going as the number four or even number five fantasy quarterback in some drafts. That's crazy. I understand that Peyton Manning took a little bit of a regression toward the end of the 2014 season, the final five, six weeks of the season. He really wasn't very good, to be honest with you. But I think a lot of that comes from the fact that he was injured. We can't neglect the fact that he was injured last year, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is an elite fantasy quarterback when he's healthy. Puts up huge numbers. Huge, historic numbers, even. Two years ago, he put up the biggest fantasy season of any quarterback ever in the history of the league. Don't forget about that. This offense might have changed just a little bit. Gary Kubiak, yes, is the coach. Now they might run the ball a little bit more trying to keep Peyton healthy, but still, Peyton Manning's going to throw the ball a ton. They've got great options at wide receiver. Cody Latimer's coming along. Emmanuel Sanders took a big upgrade last year. Demarius Thomas is a top three wide receiver in the NFL right now. This offense is going to put up points, and it's going to come from Peyton Manning primarily. So without question to me, Peyton Manning's a top five fantasy quarterback. I have him at number three. I think he's extremely safe. I love this guy for fantasy, and especially considering where you can get him right now. I think too many people are sleeping on him. He's going at just way too low in some of these drafts, especially expert leagues for some reason. These people just seem to believe that Peyton Manning, just an injured Peyton Manning last year is what he's going to be now. No, 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 no. Peyton Manning is going to go back to being an elite fantasy quarterback, and I don't think there's really much question about that. So I am very, very happy if I get him as my fantasy quarterback this year, and that's why I've got him at number three. So guys, we've gone through eight of the top ten, and we're left with my top tier of quarterbacks. We've got two guys here at the top who I believe have a potential to finish as the number one fantasy quarterback, and I believe that almost they almost have no chance other than injury of finishing outside of the top five at their position 
that type of consistency is extraordinarily rare in fantasy football, and it makes them more valuable than the other players at the position. There's almost no question about either of them, whereas there was a little bit of a question with Peyton Manning losing Julius Thomas and Wes Welker. We're not worried about that with either of these top two guys. I believe that both of them are basically 1A and 1B. I don't really rank one extraordinarily higher than the other, so don't crucify me that I have one of these guys at 2 and one of them at 1. That's just for list purposes. I'm totally happy with either of them. But number 2, I've got Andrew Luck. I think this guy is a potential future, future Hall of Famer. I mean, he's amazing pretty much everywhere. He's a great runner, even better as a passer, um, extraordinary arm. And this offense is it's just putting up huge numbers. I mean, they've got great options in the passing game. They brought in Andre Johnson, who I think should be an improvement from what they had last year. But uh, the big thing, T.Y. Hilton is being really heralded by this team as a wide receiver one in the NFL, like a, a top 10 wide receiver, even potentially a top five wide receiver. They have that type of confidence in T.Y. Hilton, and so do I. I think T.Y. Hilton is going to put up big numbers this year, and that's going to obviously help Andrew Luck continue with what he has done throughout his career. His fantasy numbers have pretty much improved every year throughout his career, and last year it topped off being the number one fantasy quarterback in a lot of scoring systems. He was number two in depending in some scoring systems and, and how you rank quarterbacks, but he was either number one or number two in basically every single league, so it makes sense, obviously, that Andrew Luck is up here at number two. A lot of people would have him as number one, and I, like I said, I don't have any problem with that. Uh, I think that the addition of Frank Gore is going to help out a little bit with the passing game more than people expect. Pa Frank Gore's an underrated pass protector. They didn't really have much of that these past couple of years, and uh, my personal opinion is that Gore is going to do a great job improving Andrew Luck's confidence in the pocket. He's not going to have to scramble quite as much, which could lead to fewer yardage on the ground, but at the same time, I still think his passing numbers are going to go up even a little bit from what they were last year, as crazy as that sounds. He was the only quarterback that threw for 40 touchdowns Downs this past year, and I don't see any reason that he couldn't repeat that performance again in 2015. The touchdowns to interception ratio, uh, we would like to see the interceptions drop just a little bit more out of Andrew Luck, and I think that'll come with more maturity and more being comfortable in the NFL, reading defenses and that kind of a thing, but he is definitely worthy of being a number one overall quarterback if you want him there. I've got him at number two, but again, he is an excellent QB. I don't have any problem taking him as the top quarterback on the board. The guy to me, though, who I am taking as the number one quarterback is a guy who just, you can't even argue with this type of success. Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers. A lot of people don't realize the type of numbers that this guy's putting up. I mean, right now, if Aaron Rodgers retired, you could easily make an argument that he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. We're talking about an extraordinary QB rating. I mean, number one all-time QB rating. Number one in touchdown to interception ratio. It's insane. This guy's putting up crazy numbers. And he still runs the ball a lot more than people think he does. Uh, he's a mobile quarterback. I mean, he's not Russell Wilson. He's not Mike Vick. But he's definitely up there among that like second tier of running quarterbacks. So, to me... Aaron Rodgers is the number one quarterback when you consider the consistency that he's had throughout his career. Ever since becoming the Green Bay Packers quarterback, this guy has finished as a top two fantasy quarterback every single year, with the exception of the one year where he was injured and missed like 10 games or so. But other than that, he's been a top two fantasy quarterback. You can't even by that type of consistency. I mean, it's insane. You couldn't pick any player to be more consistent than that. So to me, Aaron Rodgers is the number one fantasy quarterback. He's got amazing options there in the passing game. The offense is arguably getting better. So I don't see any reason to believe that he again won't finish as a top two quarterback. And I believe that he will finish as the number one fantasy quarterback. But the big thing to me is the consistency. Uh, Andrew Luck's done it for one in kind of a half year. Aaron Rodgers has done it every single year. So uh, you can't really argue with that. Gotta love Aaron Rodgers. And that is my top 10 fantasy quarterback list for the 2015 season, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you are new. It would help me out a big, big way. We're trying to grow this channel as much as we can. We will be doing other top 10 lists as well. Like I said, if you guys want to see a specific one next, please let me know in the comments section below and I will try to do that. I'm also going to be giving you guys my top overall players. And eventually, yes, I will release the full list of my top like 200 or so players that I have on my board. So thank you guys again for all the support. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll talk to you next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.